My name is Ellie Ashley, and today I am going to talk about the promise as Neville Goddard teaches it. Um, and this is actually a testimonial of my experience with the promise. Um, the four signs that he speaks of is, is what I mean. And I'm, I'm doing this because I want each of you to know that um, Neville speaks the truth. And um, I say that because I've experienced it and, you know, it's kind of ironic given the law of assumption. Uh, it's generally accepted practice that you must believe it before you see it. Um, but we're human. And so sometimes there are certain things that we must see or experience ourselves before we believe it. Um, and hopefully this will give some insight to others who maybe have experienced certain signs or are confused about the promise. Um, either way, here's my story. Um, one thing I wanted to do was start with what Neville Goddard says on love. Um, and this is a quote from him. Uh, I don't recall what passage it's from, or what, what speech or um, talk that he gave that this is from, or what book, I don't know. But I had scribbled it down and I think it's, it's very relevant. So here's Neville Goddard on love. We are told, he who is not loved does not know God, for God is love. But this is not a conclusion that the prophet reached after years of philosophic study, but an act of God in self-revelation. If God never revealed himself to man, I doubt that man would ever know that God is love. But in spite of all the horror of the world, I know from experience that God is love. So Neville's speaking the truth here, um, as I too have experienced this. This man has experienced God as love. God revealed himself to me in a way that confirms Neville's promise. Um, there were a series of events that lined up to this, and I want to mention them because I think having these types of testimonials does two things. Number one, it reinforces what Neville taught, his promise to those who believe him. And number two, others may have experienced something similar and will find solace in my story. And um, Neville has said many times, tell it to the world. So here it is. And my story really began not when I found Neville Goddard and listened to countless hours of his lectures. Uh, this indeed made a profound impact on my life and changed me from my core. But my biggest moment of clarity actually happened after that. I was fully submerged in the hell of my second divorce. I had just separated from my ex and we remained roommates for way too many months in our marital household. Um, for most of the duration of our separation, my ex remained in our beautiful bedroom suite, which I adored. And um, I opted to move into the basement and sleep on a futon instead of staying with him upstairs. And it was really, really hard. It was brutal. Not just because I missed the love and care that my ex and I once shared for one another, but also physically, it was pretty cold down there. Um, I had no windows. I live by sunlight and it had no windows. Um, no doors for privacy, um, and it was cluttered with so much of our junk that it was it was not comfortable. Also, my best friend, who happens to be a big American Bulldog, was very afraid of the basement um, at the time, and I don't know why, um, but it meant that he did not want to visit me down there. So it was cold, it was dark, it was lonely, and it was extremely inconvenient. Um, because we had a baby at the time too, who was staying on the top floor with my husband um, and myself at the time when I was staying there. And now that I was in the basement, it meant that since I was the main person caring for the baby, um, I had to climb three flights of stairs at night every time I needed to tend to him. So it sucked, it, it was bad. Um, but the point is not to illustrate my own personal hell, that by the way, I created. Uh, but to emphasize that I was very much alone on this particular evening when the first sign of the promise revealed itself to me. Before that, I was asleep, if you will. Um, and it, you know, when I found Neville Goddard, it was both freeing and mortifying that I had created my own reality, uh, my own hell, uh, <laughs> because all of my fears about relationships and marriage and being betrayed and all of that stuff, it all came true. Why? Because I feared them. Um, I would probably even go as far to say that I was obsessed with them not happening. So of course the law always works and my fear and obsession with them not happening is what caused them to manifest. Um, my fearful thoughts brought on really bad consequences and um, they're 
quite similar to those that we've heard um, when Neville talks about the book of Job. I lost my family. I lost my sense of security. It caused me great upheaval and misery in my life and my career. Um, all Every part of my life was just completely messed up. And then one day it clicked. Um, if you've read Neville's work or listened to his le lectures, which I assume you have, or you wouldn't have arrived at this video, you've likely come across him mentioning the different stages of one's awakening. He calls it God's promise. He says, before you are arisen from the dead, there will be signs in your skull and you will first awaken from the most profound sleep ever and you awaken within your skull. So after I found Neville and understood this premise that I was the creator of my own 3D by way of my imagination, I had a lot of cleaning up to do, um, particularly with my mindset. So here I was, you know, freshly out of a separation, going through my, my familial hell, um, and I was undertaking a mental diet because frankly, I was desperate. I needed help. Um, uh, I knew I could only turn to myself. So I was undertaking this mental diet for the first time ever, and it was really harrowing. Um, but what happened on the third day of the mental diet forever changed me. It was the first sign of the promise that Neville speaks of, but I didn't realize this at the time, um, not until actually the other two signs appeared. So the first sign was the zap. And um, I call it the zap because it's exactly what it was. I was laying on my futon in my basement, thinking about my life and all the misery I had created through my own wonderful human imagination. And I was trying to combat these intrusive thoughts of my past and present and future, doing the mental diet, mental karate, if you will. And I was drifting off to sleep uh, at about 1.30 a.m., I would say it was when I felt what could only be explained as an intense zap to my head. It sounded like a very hard, very loud, very intense, like zzzz. And the duration was quite long and solid, um, 15 seconds or something. But it made me jump from my reclining position and look around. And it was as if I had been struck by lightning. Um, and it scared the living hell out of me, honestly. It was seriously terrifying. And after it happened, I was physically shaking, but at the same time, I was kind of paralyzed. Like, I didn't know what to do. Um, I felt kind of afraid for my life for a moment, thinking I'd actually been electrocuted. But then I realized, wait, this only happened in my head. Um, and of course, the teachings I had been reading from Neville kind of came flooding back into me. And um, this is all about connecting to a higher power, of course. This wasn't the promise. It was more you know, you are God, God is with you, we're all kind of connected, all this stuff. Um, and so I started to feel safe, really, within you know, 30 seconds of that happening. Um, even though I was totally alone, I did not feel alone. So I was maybe even excited, um, soothed. And again, I hadn't heard yet really or paid much attention to Neville talking about the signs of the promise. Though, even if I had, I don't think I would have understood that zap as anything you know pertinent um so the next day i filed it away it's just super weird and went on with my meditation and mental diet practice and as neville promises a few months later i had the dream of a swaddled baby that he talks about and there was three witnesses and i called the baby an endearing term in my dream um and i was so happy he was there and the baby who was mine but was not expected. Um, and it wasn't my baby that I, you know, my other, my real real life baby. It was a different baby, but it was my baby. Um, he was, he smiled at me so intensely. Um, and it was just beautiful. You know, he, I called him an endearing name. He smiled at me and the dream was very, very vivid and confusing. I remember that. So as soon as I woke up, I wrote it down and then I shared it with my best friend and I shared it with my mom and, um, unclear again at the time that it was anything to do with the promise i had no idea but in hindsight it's very clear that that's exactly what it was so after this dream um by circumstances of me just really feeling like the mental diet was helping and um my meditation practice was helping and things were getting clearer and things were getting better i was seeing it it was really happening in real time i was watching it work um I started to really dig deep into Neville and therefore got more uh, information about the promise. And I was, you know, I was devouring Neville's work and um, 
noted that he had said that these things are going to happen to every single person born of woman. And I wondered, have they happened to me? Wait, was that was that signs of the promise? So <laughs> a couple months later, the next sign came, the sign of David. And this time it happened while I was in a waking state, but I was meditating deeply to, um, Wayne Dyer has this uh, audio, it's like a God sound. I don't, I don't actually know the name of it, but it's meditation music. And um, I really love it because it's just subtle and helps me focus. Um, and so I, I use it often. And after just a couple minutes of meditating to this, this sound, this music, um, I felt myself slip into Wayne Dyer's body. I could see him from above, but it was me. And it was myself, I could see myself from above as Wayne Dyer as an older white man with very light features. Um, and while I was, you know, floating above him, I recognized that that's who it was. I was him and he was me. Um, and then so, you know, I just rolled with it in my vision, in my meditation. I recognized that it was Wayne Dyer and I just continued to exist in my meditation as Wayne. And I was walking through, um, I guess I was visualizing my dream home and I was walking through it and seeing it clearly as I passed through each room. And suddenly all of the image of a house, my dream home had disappeared around me and I was transported, kind of like teleported into a tunnel. Um, and it was really great because I was holding this little boy's hand. He was leading me through this tunnel. And um, he was a little kid. He was about eight years old, maybe. I don't know, six to eight, I don't know, something like that. Short little guy. <laughs> and he was walking in front of me, leading me down a light filled pathway. And I only saw the back of his head. Um, and I saw his body too, but I couldn't see his face. Um, and his head, the back of his head, his whole body was illuminating. It was golden. Not like blonde hair golden, but he was golden. Um, he was, there was light coming from within him. And I, I asked him as he's leading me, who are you? And he slightly turned his head so I could see just a little bit of his head. And he endearingly replied, I'm your son. And so at that instance, I knew that it was David and therefore I was God. And after the vision ended, I jolted awake, but I felt, felt, I felt I was still in the vision. Um, I was stuck there almost. It was as though I was being held down on my bed, but I wasn't struggling. And then I saw a blast of light, like a, um, like flashing lights had been showering over me, like a, a confetti of starlight is what it felt like. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. One of the most beautiful things I had ever seen <laughs> in my life. Um, and then after that, you know, it kind of dissolved, the starlight kind of fizzled out. Um, I noticed a squiggle of light kind of came into my vision and it started transforming into these unrecognizable images and then eventually settled into the shape or the, the image of an eyeball. And at that point, when it settled into that image, I felt very tingly all over. And I was really warmed from the bath of light. And I was aware that I was on my bed, but I was still deep in my meditation. Um, and then I just felt really warm and very loved. And I just started weeping really hard. Um, it was a good kind of weep, but I was weeping. And then it was done. And so after this happened, I woke up and I was like, whoa, devil didn't lie. It happened exactly as he said it would. This is so cool. I still hadn't experienced the dove, um, but I knew it was coming. And, you know, m months passed, months passed. And the vision of the dove came quite a bit later than the vision of David. With the first visions, I was still in my marital home, trying to put into practice the law of assumption. And I was actually getting quite far with it. Um, it, it really works, y'all. <laughs> so sometime later, after I had manifested a much better job, a much better home, better area for my family, and I fully forgave, this is, I think, key, I fully forgave every single person who I ever thought wronged me in my life. And I really felt, and I still feel, deep love for them. That's when I had the vision of the dove. So the vision of the dove was really quite simple, quick, really. Um, I was asleep and dreaming of spending time with my children in my beautiful backyard. And this is my real backyard that I have now. And we were watching the birds on the feeder and I noticed a morning dove. And he also noticed me. 
and he quickly flew over to me while I was seated. And at first I was a little startled, like, ah, this bird's attacking me. <laughs> but that was really short lived. He flew right into my neck and began smothering me with cuddles and coos, you know, the coos of a morning dove. Um, and I, I see that as what Neville said, smothering me with kisses. That's exactly what it was like. Uh, I felt so at peace and so full of love at that moment. And the only thing I remember saying in my dream was, it's all okay. And the dove remained in the crook of my neck until I woke up. And I really think, um, you know, these are the, the four signs of the promise. I experienced them, which is crazy to me, but also, yeah, obviously we all are going to do it. And I think what helped me get to this clarity um, and start manifesting the life I really wanted, not the life I didn't want, was to focus on the love and, and loving others as often as possible uh, and, and, and really forgiving others who have wronged me again because they don't know what they've done. They're, they're not trying to hurt anyone. Um, so, but I also forgave myself for creating my own reality and um, causing so much grief. I, you know, I just let it all go. And now I really walk forward with the faith that every single thing is always working out to my advantage. And um, I really want you guys to understand that that's, that's your story too. Everything is always working out for you. Um, so that's my experience of the promise. And I hope you enjoyed my testimonial. Um, if you've experienced any signs of the promise or have any questions, leave a comment, uh, let me know. I, I definitely haven't met anyone else in real life who's experienced this, but I'm eager to. Um, I think it's really cool. And um, it's just a really humbling kind of reminder that, you know, we're all one. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, sending love to you all.